Hey guys, welcome back to sandvfx.com. I'm Sansara and I'm back with another exciting tutorial. Today we're gonna recreate the flamethrower effect using FilmFX for 3ds Max. We do already have a tutorial on that, but it's a little bit outdated and the output is not so good as well. So today we're gonna use the same similar technique and we're gonna recreate that effect in 3ds Max. So this is something what we'll be creating. Okay, so that's what we'll be creating today, and I have already opened 3ds Max, so let's get started. First of all, we need a particle system to shoot out our particles to create that uh, flame effect. So let me go down to particle system and drag in a PF source. Okay, let me uh, extend my perspective viewport. Let me rotate this uh, 90 degree. Press A to turn on angle snap and you can easily set it to 90 degree. Okay, let me pull it um, a little bit back. Okay, somewhere around here. And we have some particles shooting at, but that's not what we are we need. So I'm gonna press six key on my keyboard to open particle view. If the six key does not work, make sure that this keyboard shortcut override is toggled on, otherwise the 6 key won't work uh, so I'll press the 6 key and you will get this particle view uh, first of all let me click this PF source 001 and go up here and set my viewport percent to 100% so that I can see all of my particles at once then I'm gonna go to birth and set it at the stop at 100 so if you want longer you can do that but that'll be good enough for us and then instead of amount I'm gonna set rate and set it to 1000 particles so we need enough particles to shoot out so that our flame will be better okay next thing we're gonna do is go to position icon and set the location to pivot now you'll see all the particles are at the same line but that's okay we're gonna divert it a little on and on speed we're gonna set the speed to something like 250 and a little bit of variations okay you can set the divergence from here as well but we're gonna do that using the wind okay and I don't need the rotation and shape okay. actually this flamethrower effect is quite uh, simple it's not that difficult to create so you can easily do this and one more thing we're gonna add is the delete operator so that our particles won't last forever so let's go ahead and let me search for delete okay delete down here and my particle is and I'm gonna set my lifespan to 8 to variation also 8 so that we'll have our particle shooting for a certain time and then it dies out okay now we're gonna create a space war force and wind I'm gonna drag it and make sure that it is facing upward so let's go to the wind settings and I don't want strength otherwise the particles will shoot up so I'll just set it to 0 0.1 we don't want much strength and then I'm gonna set my turbulence to let's say 0 0.8 that'll be good and the frequency to 1 maybe okay let me add a force operator and then let me add the wind let's see how it goes now you can see the strength is still uh, too high so that the particles are flying upwards so I'm gonna reduce the strength to 0 0.01 actually we just want this turbulence data from this wind so that we'll have these particles spreading out okay that's good also we'll get some uh, nice variations on the movement of particles with this wind effect okay, that's better now we're going to create another uh, force and that's going to be vertex let me create the vertex and let me press the shift and A key to align this to my PF source okay that's the shortcut E shift plus A and then click on the object you want to align it and then I'm going to rotate it 90 degree again okay let me pull it a little bit forward that's okay okay let's go to modify tab and 
make some changes here and I'm gonna set my axial drop to something like 1.5 or maybe 1.45 that'll be okay actually I've already experimented with this so I can easily input those values what I used pre previously you can go ahead and do some experiments uh, on what you like okay set my damping to 5.5 and the orbital speed let me increase it a bit maybe 1.2 okay you'll see our particles are starting to rotate a bit that's gonna give a little bit a uh, better feel or better effect let's go down here the damping we're gonna let it be at 0 5 okay everything else looks pretty much fine okay now we're gonna add this to our PF source okay now you can see this is rotating actually previously it was not uh, my mistake okay so now that we have added it you can see our particles are shooting even further and that's what we're looking after okay that looks good obviously this rotating effect are not gonna give our fire the same kind of effect but still we'll have a better flame with this okay now that's done we're done with the particle setup we're gonna go ahead and create our fumes okay let's go down to film effects and create a film effects container let's go to top view so that we can see uh, let's see how long our particles are shooting okay, that's where our particles are up to and something like that give it some height let's see I think we'll need a little more uh, width or a bit more height as well and a bit more length okay let me pull this out here okay if you want if we need a bigger container we're gonna we can easily modify them later on so that'll be good for the startup now let me go to helper down to film effects and create a particle source go to modify tab click this pick object button here and click RPF source okay now go click select this film container open the film effects UI go to object source and add in this particle source okay let's go down here and I'm gonna set my velocity multiplier to 1.5 so that our flames are gonna kind of like shoot out along with these particles and then I'm gonna increase our temperature a bit maybe 400 so that our fire will be a little bit hotter but don't increase it too much otherwise our fire are gonna uh, rise up very much so that will be fine for now let's go to general tab and set our default path for our film effects cache data let's go to film effects cache new folder flame throw forward to and save it right in here uh, we're not gonna do any weblet or retimer so we're not setting up places for that okay then uh, let me reduce the spacing down to 2 for now or maybe 1.5 yeah, let's go to simulation tab and bump in uh, some values like the maximum iteration 100 let's go and add in some turbulence maybe 0 0.5 we don't want our fire to be too turbulent let's do a quick sim and see how it is going along okay now we can already start to see our flames shooting out yeah it's already looking so good but still we don't have uh, those uh, kind of like breaks in the turbulence we need some fire to break out and we're not gonna use the smoke if you want you can use the smoke but we're not gonna use the smoke let me stop it right here and get the scale down to maybe 15 and the details to 5 okay that's good well uh, fuel buoyancy we're gonna increase the burn rate a little more we'll set our burn rate to 35 and the burn rate variation up to 1 uh, we don't want any expansions because it's not like uh, explosion or something but so we don't need any expansions and let me turn off the smoke because I'm not gonna simulate smoke then let me go to illumination tab we don't need let's go to rendering tab and before playing around with the rendering settings first of all let us simulate this Let's play 
okay now you can see it's uh, looking better we're already starting to get our flames but it's a really low rate so we cannot see it better one thing what we can do is we can go ahead and increase the radius of our particles um, maybe to something like 1.5 let's do another sim here okay that's good let's do a little bit higher a sim maybe at 1 okay the sim is done up to 20 uh, frames uh, let me stop it right there and let's see how the animation is it's quite good let me go ahead and pull this vertex a little bit back around there maybe and we can see we have really less particles somewhere around here so let me go again to particle view and increase the birth count maybe like 1500 okay Let's see if we have something right here let's increase our variation bit maybe something like 50 that's okay and I think that'll be fine let me select my wind and let me set the strength a bit more 0 0.05 maybe okay okay that'll be okay let's go ahead and do another quick seam Okay, I'm going to stop the scene right here and we're getting what we want. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. You can uh, test with different results and go ahead and change some settings, play around with it, and try to get something more cool. So for now, let's go to the rendering tab. Okay, I'm going to reduce the opacity to 0 0.6. Also, I'm going to use this curve. Let's see what we can get. Let me just play around with this a bit. Maybe something like that. That'll be better. Uh, let's see. Disabled. Okay, that's already looking better. Okay. Now I'm gonna set the color to key mode and let's make some changes. Let me add in uh, one more edit here. Let me set it to something like a dark red color, something like a maroon or something. And this one's gonna be a black color. Okay, I'm gonna add another black color right here. Okay, you can see the red color is starting to see somewhere around here. Okay, somewhere around here. Let's go and let me create a hot yellow color somewhere around here. Add another orange color here, something like that. Let me cramp that a bit. Okay, this looks pretty good. And for this color right here, I'm gonna set it something to like a purple color. Okay, so actually. This film, this kind of film tour, it um, does not actually look uh, so real, like a f from a flamethrower gun. 
this kind of um, stock footage can be used to create some action movies uh, where the actor can throw flintthrower from his hand or something like that or it can also be used on a real flintthrower gun and I have watched uh, lots of fires kind of like gasoline fire the fire looks kind of like a purplish or bluish maybe that can also be the case uh, whatever it is actually my purpose of creating this flinter was to use it on some kind of a short action film where the actor has some supernatural powers he can shoot some flames or fires from his hand so it can really be uh, look uh, really good on such cases let me make it a little more hotter maybe like that okay maybe a little more hotter orange as well okay that's uh, better that looks good we can play around with this color as well but that looks pretty good for now and that's it uh, we don't have much things it's a pretty simple step create a particle system with um, 1500 particles from start to end position as a pivot speed uh, some speed and some variations add in wind and vertex with some settings delete after certain times that uh, it can depends on based on a scene and then go ahead create a film effects container and then play with some settings there's uh, not much just kind of like uh, the turbulence and then the uh, burn rate that's it there's uh, nothing much so you can easily follow up and create this effect and once you are done playing around with the settings you can go to general tab reduce the spacing to something like 0 0.2 or maybe 0 0.4 if you don't have a too high system uh, okay go ahead render uh, simulate aid then go to render setup and then set it to range set your desired output size select the uh, on a drive to save your render files and then hit render that's it guys um, you made it through this as well I hope you guys can create this uh, and add it to any of your scene and create some kind of uh, really cool effect uh, we'll see you guys soon for more tutorials as well as don't forget to check out some free models on scientifics.com uh, we are soon adding up more free 3d models as well as some textures as well so don't forget to check our website and subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our videos. Thank you guys for watching.